Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I got a question from one of my producers, Fred, who had wanted to know whether or not it was easier to paint stuff on a base, a weapons team specifically, once they'd been fixed in place, uh, when he should apply a basing material and that sort of stuff. And I gave him an answer at the time, which was based mostly on what I had been doing. But today I've tried one of the suggestions I gave him, and I think this turned out way better. So Fred, this one's for you. <laughs> and if you've never come across metal weapons teams before, like say you're coming over to bolt action from, I don't know, 40K or similar, which has a lot of plastic miniatures, then these can seem a little daunting because the very first time you come across them, well, how do you handle a metal miniature? And it might sound simple to some of us who've been doing this forever, or who even remember metal devastators. <laughs> that takes me back. But there is always a first time you learn something. So if you're looking for how you can do this, you've not come across it before, or you just want some painting tips for how to put together a weapons team, follow along. As always, all of the paints will be listed in the description below. Let's get started. Now, if you've never assembled metal miniatures before, uh, a quick tip that I want to point you to. I have two sets of side cutters or clippers, whatever it is you call them. And the reason being is I have one for plastic and then I've got this slightly older, more heavy duty looking beastie, uh, which has been absolutely murdered over time. Uh, this one I use on metal and bigger chunky things because clipping metal stuff is going to slowly destroy your clippers. So for a nice clean plastic cut, you want to make sure that you're not using your metal clippers and stick to using plastic on your plastic clippers. So first of all, let's get this open. Uh, as you'll see, it's not the most inspiring little baggie, but <laughs> it does the job. So I'll tip these out. Now up close, we have first of all the MG itself and the tripod that it's going to be on. And you'll see that these are a bit of a mess when you first get them. These little extra bits of metal, uh, some of them will quite easily just wiggle off, but make sure that you're not pulling off anything important while you do that. As always, I do recommend either have the store page open because there'll be pictures of the kit itself there, or you can also use, uh, you know, go onto Google, do a Google image search for a 30 cal machine gun, and you'll find, oh look, there is what it looks like and what bits to clip off. Now you'll find ordinarily these little wiggly bits of flash on all of your parts. So what I'm going to start with is just going around and clipping all of these off. I'll come back once that's finished. Now once you've gone around and clipped off most of those bigger parts of flesh, you'll still have some little areas, like for example on the bottom of this fella's base here, you'll see there's a little bit of protruding metal. And for that we're going to need to use some files. Now I use the Army Painters files. Um, any file will do the job here, although make sure that they are proper metal ones. Um, I quite like this sort of triangular shaped one. Uh, reason being is that it gets in to some of the smaller areas when I need it. Uh, but all I'm going to do is flip them up and just start filing, oh, filing that little bit of base flat. Now once you've got all of your mold lines and flash removed, you can start assembling. And one quick note on these guys, a lot of the Warlord miniatures games are going to have separate heads. And they've got these long pegs which count as a neck. And you'll notice that when you sort of just jam them in for the first time, you're going to have these strange <laughs> alien proportioned guys with really long necks. What you're going to want to do is go back to your file and start grinding some of this down, test fitting, and so forth. All right, really take your time with this one. I tend to find filing the uh, the neck joint quite narrow and then blunting it a little as I go to make sure that the fit is secure is the way to go. But once you've done that, you can super glue them in. So let's take a second here. As you can see, that's quite a lot narrower than it was. If I test fit that into the loader's uh, neck there, that gives me a pretty good pose because I want him to be looking up towards the MG he's feeding. So let's go ahead, pop a little bit of super glue in there, and I will do the same thing to the other two guys as well. Now, once you've got all three of your fellas assembled, it's time to make some decisions. Now, because Bolt Action uses a casualty removal system where you take off models when they are killed, 
Uh, some folks like to put this loader on a separate base. But the problem with that is, at least from my perspective, is once you've got your other two guys, let's just lay these out, attached to the base like that, this fella, you know, you can leave a gap for him at the back on his little separate base and not put any basing material there, like no tufts or what have you, but it does look a little strange. Now that's how I've assembled one of my MG teams, but I am going to do this one differently, and I want all three guys on this one base. Now, really, the point of one of Fred's questions was, well, if we glue them all down like this, then how do we do the basing? How do we paint in areas that are difficult to reach? And so forth. And this is where I'm probably not the best person to ask, because if you know me, uh, if you can't see it, don't paint it, is pretty much my motto, but I know that doesn't sit right with some. Uh, what I am going to suggest, though, is if you do want to paint these guys and make sure you're going to get to all of the separate bits, what we'll do is this. So the first thing I've done is to glue the actual MG to the base where I want it to be, because it's going to be the most fiddly part to have to glue back on later. But I've now got some blue tech on an old cork, and what I'm going to do is just pop these fellas straight onto there for priming and painting. And with that done, suddenly this becomes a painting exercise instead. Now, it's up to you whether or not you put basing material on this before you attach the guys. Um, I would suggest that if you're going to put sand or anything on there now, now is the time to do it before we prime them. Uh, there will be one or two assembly steps later on where we're going to have to account for the fact that they are going to be a little bit off of the ground because of how we've done that sand, but it's much of a much. So I'm going to pop some sand on here, go out and prime these, and then, like I said, becomes a painting video. Now, first of all, I've hit all of them with a primer of Wraithbone. Um, now, I've come to really like using that. It's just a little off-white. You'll see there's some creaminess to it. So it works really well if you have slightly thinner paints and you end up with some of this showing through. It works for regular paints the same as it does like Citadel's Contrast. Uh, you'll have to trust me that the third fella is primed as well. But the first thing I'm going to do is actually not to paint them. I'm going to put these aside. And the very first thing we're going to do is to base the MG itself. So I've gone and primed that in the same color as everything else. I am going to paint it black, but whatever. <laughs> it can be bone for now. I'm just laying down a layer of PVA glue. Um, I keep mine watered down in the pot itself, so it's always good for basing. And then once I've got this down, holding it very carefully, I'm just going to pop it in the top of my sand and shake that a few times until it starts to pick up. That's probably not the best way of doing it. Let's just dip it in there. There we go. Cover that with sand. Now, honestly, you can leave it in there, but I'm going to pull it out and we'll just tip most of this off. Give it a quick tap from the bottom. And there we go, there is the basic material on our MG stand. So what I'm going to do is put this aside, and by the time we're finished painting, that's going to be nice and dry to put other stuff on top of. Now because I've painted US Infantry a few times on the channel, uh, I'm going to go through these fairly quickly. So we'll start off with German Camo Beige, and this is going to be for their jackets. And you'll see how easily this covers over that wraith bone, I love it. Now with all three of their jackets done, we're going to move on to their trousers. And for two of them, I'm going to use US Field Drab. Now I've spoken a few times about how the uniform would change over time, and if you're doing sort of post-Sicily, you know, into Normandy and what have you, it helps to have a couple of guys in green, which we'll touch on in a second. But for now, let's get brown on two of these pairs of trousers. And then for lucky number three, I've got Russian Uniform Green, which is kind of ironic, but it's <laughs> the best color I've found for doing these trousers. And we'll just paint this on. Some folks will suggest that US Dark Green is the way to go here. Um, I tend to find it, ironically, a little too dark. But if you do like that finish, then you can use that instead. There's not really a 100% correct answer here. Uniform isn't. And once you get field conditions involved, you know, mud, sunlight, all that sort of carry on, a little bit of variation is not going to be a bad thing. And we're going to move on to painting their webbing. And following the same principle, we're going to pick two guys 
and do their webbing in dark sand, which is a nice light yellow color. And then for lucky contestant number three, we're going to use pastel green for a lighter sort of faded green one that was introduced later in the war. Now, generally speaking, if you want your guys to be, you know, a little more fresh or a little late war, then the more green they should be overall. Uh, but that yellow stuff was being issued all the way up until the end of things. Now with those stages done, we're back to everybody being painted in the same colors again, which is nice and useful. So I'm using Cadian Flesh Tone from Citadel to paint in their skin. And you can use anything you like here, of course. It's just this has got a little bit of a sort of pinky reddish tone to it that when we shade this, this is going to come out really nicely. It also covers brilliantly <laughs> over Wraithbone. Now I'm doing this now because when it comes to faces and what have you, you can paint up. And if you hit the helmet, oh well, too bad, too sad, never mind, we haven't painted that yet. So let's just go around now. All three of these dudes in Cadian Flesh Tone. And then speaking of those helmets, we're going to use Camo Olive Green to paint those in. And you'll find you probably need to apply two coats of this because you will get some of the uh, primer showing through. And as well, I'm going to paint the ammo canister in this as well. Now for me, when that green goes on is when they start looking a little more lively. Now I've got some Retributor armor and I'm doing this at this stage really just so that I don't forget. And I'm going to paint in the MG rounds. I'm going to paint in the whole thing, but we're going to do a little strip of khaki down the center later to represent the cloth belt, which would have had them together. Now we're reaching the point that we're just doing some detail parts. I've got khaki, and I'm going to paint this into the strap on this fella's M1. And we'll also do a thin strip of this down the center of the MG belt. So let's angle that as best I can and just... If I make a mistake here, I can go back and straighten up with a little bit of Retributor Armor again. Now, speaking of straps, we're going to use Mahogany Brown as our sort of red leather color. And I'm going to paint in the holster on the gunner here in this leather color. Um, and then I'm going to switch to a smaller brush and we'll start doing in things like the straps on helmets, and also the strap on the loader, sorry, not the loader, the ammo carriers Thompson. Make sure you're doing that in leather too. Now for any wooden details like rifles, I've watered down some beige brown just a little. Now you can use any watercolor, watercolor rather, wood color that you like here. Uh, beige brown for my money looks the best once it's shaded. Now we're going to go back to German Camo Beige, and we're doing this at this point, because this is a cleanup stage. The gaiters, if we have uh, gone over with any of the trouser color, you can tidy that up now with your German Camo Beige going on. And at the same time, because we've now applied all of the straps and webbing and what have you, any little bits you need to tidy up now, you can do that on the jacket at the same time. Now with the gaiters done, we can finally paint in the boots, and I'm going to use just leather brown for this. This will cover fairly well, but if you do need to, you can come back and give it a second coat. Now for the sandbag that the gunner is laying on, I'm going to use a little bit of Iraqi sand. Although, to be perfectly honest, now any sort of tan or similar will work here, so if you want to use tan earth or whatever, you know, it's just a sandbag. And now finally we can start doing the black details, which is really the final stage before we shade them. Now this fellow's Thompson, of course, is quite clearly visible, but this little square tucked under his arm for the longest time, when I first did the first couple of uh, weapon teams, I could not figure out what it was supposed to be. So <laughs> you might have pegged in earlier than me. Uh, I thought I'd probably better mention it just on the off chance. But once we've got these black details, we'll let that all dry and settle, and then we'll move on to our shade. Now don't forget to paint your MG black at this stage. Now once you've done all of your cleanup and you're satisfied with the overall look, it's time to apply our shade. And here we are with Agrax Earthshade, and one of my 
just ordinary flat tip brushes. We're going to apply this straight over each of the miniatures. Now this will do most of the work for us, but you do want to make sure you're working it into any recesses, which is why I like using these slightly cheaper, nastier brushes for this, because you can be quite rough with them. Now while those guys are drying, I've watered down some flat brown to almost shade consistency. And I'm going to start applying this to the base, so that it's got plenty of time to dry, and everything will be ready at pretty much the same time. Now you don't have to use flat brown, you know, you could use whatever colour you want for your basing here. Uh, but whatever colour you do choose, make sure that you put it aside, because we're going to need it for our infantry once we do those little sort of lip bases on them. Now when at last that sheet has dried, suddenly these guys have come to life. What a difference it makes, right? Now what I'm going to do is to highlight the jackets and the trousers using the base colour and a half and half mix using ivory. Now I've done this a couple of times before, uh, but it is a really useful sort of universal highlight colour. Um, I am going to highlight first of all the jacket, so it's German camo beige, and ivory at a one to one ratio. And this is a really good reason to have a wet palette because this makes this way easier. Now I'm just going to pick a few areas to accentuate these folds in the jacket. Uh, but yeah, as much or as little of this as you like, you might like the finish as it is already, but I'm going to add just a little bit more depth with some of this mix. Then we'll move on, and with the same mix ratio, we're going to use Ivory and US Field Drab, and we'll paint in the brown trousers. And then we'll do the same thing with the Russian uniform as well for the green fella. And when it comes to highlighting the webbing, if you'd like to do that, you can either stick to the one-to-one -one mixes with Ivory to make up the highlight colours, or you can use for the yellow webbing, I've got Pale Sand, And for our green webbing, I have here green grey. Now bear in mind that there are two colours called green grey, and this is the far lighter one. So be sparing with this, but it will look pretty cool once it dries and settles. And then with a little bit of Kislev flesh, I'm going to highlight the skin. Now it's up to you how intense you want to go with this. I'm just going to do noses, cheeks and chins and the back of a few knuckles. Now I've mixed up camo olive green and some of that green grey in another sort of rough one-to-one. -one. I'm just going to do some extreme edges on the ammo tins. Now you can also do that on the rim of the helmet, that'll look kind of cool. I'm going to go on now to oily steel and I'm just going to paint in little tiny bits at the very edges of the weaponry, any black details. And as always, don't forget here that you have the MG as well. Now you might recall me suggesting that you keep hold of the colour you use to paint the base, and I've gone back to flat brown. I've probably got way too much on my brush here, but we're going to apply this to that visible lip on the base. Don't worry too much if you do get really close to some detail and you don't want to risk painting it, because we can just hide it with static grass. But I'd suggest a quick blast of this will help disguise that rim there. Now once that's dried thoroughly, what I'm going to do is take them downstairs and hit them with a matte varnish spray. Um, I'm going to use Vallejo's matte varnish, because it's always worked really well for me, and I want them to be very well protected before I pull them off of these corks and start fixing them to their base. So let's come back in a couple of minutes when that's done. Now while those guys dry, I am going to quickly dry brush some dark sand over the top of my base here, and you'll see that starts to improve the look quite a bit. Now once your varnish has had time to dry thoroughly, and I recommend leaving it for at least half an hour, but overnight's even better. I've got here the old glove, and the reason for this, don't make my same mistake, I've been handling grubby stuff all day, uh, when you pull these off of your, your nice corks, you don't want to end up smudging them with horrible stuff on your fingers. All right, so glove on and let's just ease these off. 
Now because it's so warm, I've got that blue tack stuck to the bottom there, but I can just peel that off in a second. Now to attach them to the base, I've got some Yoohoo, or Uhu, depending on where you're from. Uh, anything like this will work. You could even use undiluted PVA, um, Elmer's wood glue, whatever it is that you've got near you. Um, I'm using Yoohoo because it's nice and sticky. And oh goodness me, don't don't go crazy while I'm trying to do this. Uh, but this has got a little bit of give to it. So it's really handy that I've got some time to work with it to get this fella into position. So let's just jam the gunner down. I've just popped the loader down there as well, and I'll put a little bit of this on the base, and I will sit the ammo carrier, gosh, that's probably quite a bit, I'll sit the ammo carrier at the back. Now the reason I'm using this Uhu stuff is because it dries clear, which will be perfect for us. So let's just wiggle them around while well, that's still got a bit of give. Now Yuhu is sticky and works within about five minutes. Um, I've left them here for 10. They do suggest it takes up to 24 hours for it to reach maximum effectiveness. So I'm not gonna tip them upside down <laughs> for much if I can avoid it. What we'll do now is start hiding some of this odd geometry. And I've got some PVA. And all I'm gonna do is start adding some static grass. So let's put a few dollops of this stuff. Now I always find it easiest to work in segments when it comes to bases like this. So I'm going to basically finish up this area with a little bit of glue, rinse my brush off, and then over the tub, I'm just gonna sprinkle this straight on. Now that's quite a lot of grass, so I'm gonna tip it sideways and start gently tapping the base. I don't wanna knock these guys off before that you who's dried. <laughs> Now while your glue is still wet, you'll often find you can just blow lightly on the surface and it will stand up that, uh, that grass. So don't worry too much if you haven't got an applicator. I'm gonna go around now the whole thing. Now a quick word from the wise, five minutes was not long enough. <laughs> if you can, leave these guys overnight for that Yoohoo to settle. I'm gonna use now just a couple of tufts uh, to just hide any remaining bits, which I don't wanna be visible. And then I'm going to apply some flowers. And then we'll just paint the rim of the base and we can really call them finished. So once I've got these tufts on where I like, we'll let all of that dry. And then we'll come back and get a look at the finished product. Now there at last, our weapons team is complete. And I have done about six or seven full-size weapon teams before by just gluing them to the bases and struggling to paint around them. But I have to admit, after having done it this way, that's my mind changed. <laughs> I'm gonna paint them separately like this and then fix them to an almost finished base. It's easy enough to be able to hide the little lips of those bases, uh, you know, integral to the miniatures. And I think once it's on the table, those are gonna disappear entirely. I'm really quite pleased with that result. So thank you to Fred for asking about that because without that little nudge, I would probably never have rethought, you know, a technique I've been using for years. So thanks very much for that one. As well, thank you very much to Exit23 Games for the light and sound equipment, as well as all of the patrons who are keeping me ticking in paints and glue, including my wonderful producers, Alan Nuttall, Kyrie Crawford, Trainboy, Jimmy, and Fred. Your support is invaluable, folks. Any questions or anything, feel free to drop them in the old comment box below. My Twitter and Instagram are both linked there too. So thank you very much for your time, one and all, and you all enjoy the rest of your day.